And here we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome back after a two-week hiatus, break, vacation, whatever you want to call it, holiday break. Um, we are back. It seemed like the good thing to do was just to go ahead and take a break for two weeks because so many people are going to be out of town, visiting, having relatives over. So coming in on a live or even spending some time during the week um, watching the video was going to be difficult. So we just decided to go ahead and take a break. And uh, it's been two weeks and I am so ready to get back to work. I was actually missing you guys so much on those Sundays. So I'm so grateful you're back with me and um, I'm looking forward to this next block. In my opinion, this next block is pretty easy, but you never know. Everybody's a little bit different on how things work up. So each block or each one of these of this next one that we're gonna be working on should, with the cutting instructions, the new set of cutting instructions, um, and please, I hope everybody got it. Excellent, Miss Claudine. Hopefully everybody got the new set of cutting instructions that I sent out. I sent out first an email that told you which ones to fix, and then someone asked me to send the whole thing. So I fixed it, recopied it, and sent it back out. So there should be like three of them. So the last two, the last one would be the best because it has all of the, all of the um, cutting all in one and exactly, hopefully exactly the way it's supposed to be. So for the most part, your colors B through, B through B, C, H, and I have one and a half strips, except for there are um, one set of two inch strips on B, C, H, and I. Um, if, you're, if you're looking at the instructions, that makes perfect sense. If you don't have the right instructions, that will make no sense at all. So make sure you take a few minutes. If you don't have it, or if you haven't looked, go back and uh, see if you can find that third email from SRQ Quilters and um, find the right one. Happy New Year. Thank you, Miss Jerry. I had a good one too. So yes, Happy New Year to everyone. Just one more time to remind you, if you would like to get in on the next one, you need to let me know. You can either send that to my email, which is srqquilter at gmail.com, or you can let me know right here during the live. I'm still here. I'm having phone issues. I understand completely. I got, I'm having monitor issues. Um, so let me know either through the live or through an email or on Facebook. Let me know you'd like to join if you have not been on this one, you need to send me your email, but don't do it in a comment. Send it in a private message. Send me your email in a private message because you don't want that out there for everybody to see. You want to keep it private. So just send it in a private message through my SRQ Quilters. Just tap on the messenger page. Or if you're on YouTube and you're watching this, you know, send, it, send a comment through the YouTube page and I will include you. If I include you, the pattern will be, the, the clues will be free. Um, I won't charge you for them. If you join later, then you will have to pay for the clues and they're about $1.25 through my Etsy shop and they're downloadable. And Miss Janice is here. Hey, Miss Janice. I'm looking, I don't, I don't see her making any comments. So somebody must have, saw her, uh, must have seen her pop in. Um, it's so good to have you on. We're so glad you're here. Hope you're feeling better. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started because I think we've probably talked enough. So we're going to take a look at, let me find my, okay. So here is, here's all the colors that I have cut out. I'm kind of waiting a second because I don't, I see it on my one screen but not on the other one. So, wow, that thing really is laggy. I uh, can't wait to get my new monitor out there. Okay, so we have B, C, we can go ahead and turn, move that here, H and I, and that way at least they're in order. B, C, H and I, and of course this is K, and in K we have the square, we have the smaller half, half rectangle, or half, um, the rectangles, and then the larger rectangle down here. And the first thing we're going to start with is we're going to start with this one. You're going to take your K, and this should be a three by three. I'm sorry, three and a half by three and a half. Yes, yes, three and a half by three and a half. I apologize. I was reading the ones that are the the, the ones you have to cut in half. 
All right, so let's take this three and a half by three and a half. And then the very first one we're going to do is the, should be the B. We're going to do B first. Now for me, that is the purple one. That is the dark purple. So we're going to take the B. Tap the center of the image and see if it helps. I have no idea what you mean. But I have no sound. Oh. Everybody else has sound, so it's got to be something on your end, sweetie. Try, um, all I can say is usually when I have that problem, I use the button to see if maybe I've got it turned all the way down. Like on my phone, I actually have my um, media way down. But everything else is way up. Other than that, I don't know. I don't know what to do. All right, so we're going to take our, you know, find your right sides, put your right sides together. And as you know, this one for me, they're both, batiks have that thing where they don't, I don't have to worry about that because the, um, they look the same on both sides. And then you can pin it together or you can just put it underneath the needle. I generally just put it underneath the needle, but since I want to make sure it stays together, we're going to do it like this. Okay, so at this point, you're just going to put your two right sides together, and it's, like I said, it should match exactly. So B, the smallest piece, is going to go at the top. Miss Janice, do you have a tablet or something you can use, or somebody else's phone, or go into your settings and see if maybe the settings are turned way down? Okay, let's get over here to the other one. Well, I guess if she can't hear me, it's kind of silly of me to sit there and ask her questions. Uh, let's see. Let me come over here. All right, Miss Janice is in. She's got sound now. Sorry, Miss Janice, I was trying to give you all these really cool clues and tips, and actually I wasn't doing that good. But anyways, I was trying to give you clues and tips on how to get that up, and then I realized, oh, <laughs> she can't hear me. Wow. Okay, y'all, I am blonde. That's a, um, it's a blonde joke, and I'm blonde, so I'm, I think I'm allowed to say that. All right, so let's go ahead and stitch that down. And remember to use your quarter of an inch. And after I'm done with this piece, I'm actually going to show you. I think I found my quarter inch ruler. Okay. Did you, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Yep, sure enough. Okay. So, you know, we have been talking about the quarter inch ruler. And this one, I'm not even sure where I, where I got that. I know it says Sarah's machine quilting. Um, and I'm not sure. I think this is really old. And it has a couple of different spots here. Here's the quarter of an inch right there. And what you would do is you would send, put this underneath your needle. And you can find them pretty much all over. And I don't have any. I apologize. You're going to put your needle through the hole. Drop your foot down and line it up with your foot to see how far past your foot. Or if you need to put down a piece of tape or a guide, um, this is where you would put that tape down. And you want to make sure it's straight. That's the biggest thing is to make sure it's straight. Because if for some reason it's turned a little bit like this or like this, then you're going to wind up putting it. And even if it's just a little bit, it's going to make a huge difference. So you just want to make sure it's straight. And so I'm lining it up with the line here down my red and I see where my quarter of an inch is and in actuality I think I'm doing a slightly smaller probably a scant quarter of an inch all right so that is how you can check your quarter of an inch these things are absolutely invaluable I, I love them I, I use them all the time and I lose them all the time so there you have it, straight from my lips to your ears. All right, let me grab my little mat here and turn on the other camera. Yes, Ooh. I don't know, it's acting up kind of today, huh? I have my trusty Aliso. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead, flip it over. And of course, I got my trusty little iron. 
And this because I want to make sure it's down flat before I put my iron on it. And again, I don't want to move or push or wiggle. Whoop, there, there it wiggles. But I don't want to wiggle it around. I want that to be a nice straight. And as you can see, that turned out a beautiful. All right. So let's just take a quick measure here. And now the next one we're going to use is four and a half inches. Okay. But here's one thing I want you to keep in mind. When we're working on this, from this point on, you want to keep the purple side or the B side, B down. So your B and C are always going to be down in a down motion like this. Okay? So whenever you're taking it off to put the next piece on, remember B down. B down. Not really. We don't want you to be down right now. We want you to just to have the letter B down. Letter B. Okay, where did my, where did the rest of my stuff go? Here it is. So the very next one we're going to do is the I. We're going to take I. We're going to slide it off of there. And I'm going to leave these on because, well, that just kind of helps. Okay, next is I. Now we're going to stick it on there and see how we did. Get that out of the way. And look, look how beautiful that is. It matches. I know, I'm, like, I'm all excited about that. You guys just don't know. Sometimes when I'm putting these things together and I'm looking at them thinking, oh, I hope this, fit. I hope this matches up. So I'm all kinds of excited when it actually works out. All right, so purple is going to go down, or your B, your B colors, which are B and C, are going to go here, and your reds or your H and I's are going to go across here. So let's go ahead and put this on the, and stitch that on. There we go. And I'm going to do my best to not run over my needles. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I have not been using my scissors because I finally changed over to a different thread. Oh, that doesn't good. Oh, guess what? It did not stitch at all. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So that's not the problem. Let's see. No, that's not the problem either. So I don't know what happened. I don't know why it didn't come through. Oh well, it happens. All right, let's try that one more time. Anyways, what I was saying was before I was so rudely interrupted by the fact that it didn't work, was that I have um, I changed threads. I found that the thread I was using every time I would hit the cut button, it would unthread in the needle. And it still does occasionally, but for the most part, it stitches a very nice line all the way through. So, at least with, with my Ari, it was almost every single time my other thread. Um, almost every single time it would unthread, and it has to do with the 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 kind of thread it is. It's it's a nice, nice lightweight type thread, and it just does it curls a lot. So when it curls, it curls, it pulls it right out of there. So, but I do love Ari, and I hate the fact that I'm having trouble using it in my sewing machine. Okay. Oh, and you know what I found out? Well, I found out that I can actually open an Amazon store. At least I think I can. I'm still looking into it. Um, it's not supposed to be that difficult because you have to have a certain amount of followers. And according to my Instagram page, I actually have enough followers. 
So it's kind of cool. So I'm going to try and open up my an Amazon shop. And that way, when I have something that I use, um, especially because I get a lot of my stuff from Amazon, then all you have to do is go into the link and you can get it right from there. You don't have to fish around or look around. You can go straight through the link and it'll take you right there, um, which will be so cool. I'm so excited about that. All right, so let's find the next one. How are we doing here? Any questions so far? All right, so the one we just did was this one. Now it's time to go back to here. No, it's not. I'm sorry. Stop. Okay. Do, do, do. Let's see. Okay, so here's what we need to do. We need to take off a quarter of an inch. And the easiest way to do that is to find a line that's a 45 degree, that's a 45 degree angle right there. And we're gonna put, okay, I gotta have my other ruler. We're going to put, let's see, I'm going to flip that over and use the other side. See where the line is right there, where the button, or the, the button, ah, y'all, some days are better than others. See where the two seams meet up right here? Can you see that okay? My monitor on my, my dashboard froze up. But according to the live, we're still going really well. So if there's a problem, somebody let me know. Okay. Wow, this thing is so slow. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and, it, and it doesn't look like it's affecting the live, but it is definitely affecting on my monitor. How weird is that? Okay. So we're going to take that quarter of an inch right here, and we're going to line it up with that little spot right there. And then we're going to use the seam here to make sure that we're straight. And we want to cut this little, this little triangle out. OK? Everybody following me so far? OK. So I am actually going to pull this down just a little bit. OK, and we're going to go over it one more time. All right, so the easiest thing I find to do is to find a mat. Now, these are these little small mats, and I think we actually got this at our, <laughs> Laura says, no, that's all right, Laura, this is practice, honey. We're going to, this is what this is for, is to get us out of our comfort zone and get these things where they are. You can do them in your sleep, all right? So just the easiest way I found is to line it up on this line right here. This gives us a spot to work with, okay? You see this right here? We're going to use the quarter inch spot on the ruler, on the edge of the ruler, because we know we need to come a quarter of an inch away from this, okay? Here, quarter of an inch. And we're going to take that and we're going to line that up. And my ruler is pu pushing around because I got little dots on it. Okay, so you see where I got that? And then I'm just going to twist my ruler a little bit making sure that I keep that quarter of an inch right here at the at the seam where the seams meet and then I'm going to make sure that it's straight across this this mat yeah this is just a Dollar Tree mat it's a Dollar Tree mat but what I like about it is the one I have underneath doesn't have any of the lines right here where I'm working but this one does and you can find that on um, some of the smaller mats, you, the little turntable mats, some of those have it. Um, but just this is simple little mat. And we're going to just cut it right off, just like that. And now, if you measure from here to here, that should be a quarter of an inch. And it should be a quarter of an inch all the way down. Isn't that pretty? You got this, Miss Laura. Come on. Don't you worry about it. You got this. All right. 
Now we're going to grab one of the small, the small triangles. Remember to do right sides together. Now what I usually do is I just kind of eyeball it, but if you fold it together, give yourself a little seam there. Okay. Put your point, I don't even know if you can see this real well. Put your point right there on that seam, that little crease that you made. Line it up. See, that's why I love my stiletto. And just make sure that your line matches up here and here. A couple of pins to keep it in place while you're stitching. You can put your pins in one direction or you can, which I usually when I do it, I do it this way. But sometimes if I want to keep the pins in, but I want to try to go, keep going without it, I'll put it in like that. Okay. Any questions so far? Everybody good? Okay. Let's come over here. I'm going to put this up here real quick. And then we're going to stitch it. I feel like that's not giving you a very good view of this. Let me turn it a little bit. Is that a little better? Actually, I think I can even get a little bit closer. Let's try that. All right, let me check the focus on that just a little bit. How does that look, y'all? that look any better? And when you put your down, foot down for your quarter of an inch, you ought to notice that it's um, lining right up in the corners. I'm going to slide that pin out. Sometimes when I do that, I pop that thing clear across the room. All right. When you open that up, you should be right at the point. Yeah, I think I have a couple of those Dollar Tree mats in my store. Of course, I sell them for two bucks because I had to pay tax on them too. Okay. I love me some resale. Okay, and my monitor, has, the other monitor is frozen up again. I do not want, know what's going on here. I'm just glad it's not affecting the actual live. That would just completely befuddle me. Well, this was three and a half. We took off a quarter of an inch. This was, I don't remember. Just remember, I can't give you too many sizes because the, um, because again, this pattern is going to wind up being in my Etsy shop. Okay. But let's just put it down here. So yeah, it should, and you are going to need to trim it off. And this should be right at four and a half inches. Yep, that's it, Sally. Four and a half inches. And there you go. There is your first turn. Isn't it pretty? What do you think? And if you keep that seam in there, at least for the next round or two, you should be able to get, um, to be able to use it for the next couple. All right, let's keep going. How does everybody feel about it so far?
All right, so keeping the purple or um, the letter B at the bottom, let's do the next one, which will be letter C. We're going to use letter C. We're going to take that next smaller one. We're going to pull it off. And this is, I'm still on my batiks. And if you put it on there, look, it should fit perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. It is really cool, isn't it, Miss Lori? And I will have this pattern available in my Etsy shop tomorrow by, well, it'll probably be in there tonight. No, tomorrow. Tonight. Definitely by tomorrow. So you're welcome to purchase the pattern um, through the Etsy shop. And then you'll be, you know, if you want me to put you on the next one, which I do have your name down, but again, I need you to send me your, um, your email. All right, let's get you on the right screen. Does that look any better? Can you see? Am I, is it just, hang on, let me see if I can get the. Oh, I just popped the LEDs out of that bad boy. Let's see if I can get us a little more light. Oh, that's about the best I can do for light, guys. I'll keep working with it and see what I can do. All right, so let's go ahead and do our next, our next scene. Okay. And then we're going to flip that out. Okay, and if anybody's not sure, or have not um, looked into it, this is actually what we call a wood iron. Um, they come in many forms. Here's one I just got in my Christmas box. That's a wood iron. And I also have this one is also a wood iron. Um, also good for turning. Both All of these are good for turning as well. Um, let's see. I think that's all the extras I have right now. Usually I have a bunch of different stuff hanging around here, but this is one of my favorites. This was made by um, a friend of the guild. Um, I keep trying to tell him he needs to uh, join the guild because he quilts too. And um, anyways, this is a wood iron he made for me. He, he made a whole bunch of them. I think I might even have one or two in my Etsy shop. I'm not sure. All right, let's go ahead and add on the next one. The next one is going to be letter H. Letter H. So letter H, <clears throat> which in my case is the dark red. And if you match it up, it should match up pretty much perfectly. Pretty much. Let's put that right there and there. We're going to give it a couple of pins just so it doesn't try to slide out on us like that. Mm, excuse me. Okay, let's move that out of the way. And then we're going to bring it over here. <coughs> excuse me. And give it a quick stitch. As long as you're following their quarter inch seam, you know, making sure that it's a good quarter of an inch seam, these, all these numbers, all these um, uh, strips should be matching up. Okay. We should be matching up. How are we doing? Oh, not that one. 
Okay. We're going to flip that out. Now, if you're wondering why would I use the, um, the wood iron instead of just sticking the iron on it, is because I want the seam to be consistent. If I put the iron on it and I just place it down, it might fold up like this and create a different seam, which will kind of put it out of wonk. And if I do it like this, where I push the edge out, the other problem you run into is that it could bow the fabric so that the fabric has a bow in it. And so if I use my wood iron, fold it out with my fingers, use my wood iron, then I've got at least part of a seam going really well. The wood iron thing, um, the one I'm using was a uh, gift from a friend of the guild. He makes stuff for the guild. He did like about 50 or 60 of them for our retreat. And I believe I have one in my Etsy shop. If I don't, I can put one in there for you. Uh, they're not much. You know, I know um, in some of the places where you can get the wood irons, they, they get kind of costly. Uh, but he's a sweetheart and he does them for the guild. And I know he wouldn't mind if I sold a few of them online. So if you would like one, just let me know and I'll make sure it's in my Etsy shop. Okay. So we're going to do another one of these. And we're going to do the same thing. Here's our V. Here's where the two seams meet. Here's our quarter of an inch. We're going to line that up. And even if it's not exactly on the line, and I know you can't see it from where, where I'm at, so I'm going to slide it over here. So hopefully you can see it a little better. So I'm going to put this here. It's on my quarter of an inch right there. And if you can see it, my lines are not exactly lined up with the edge, but that's okay because I can see the difference here and here are pretty much the same. And I know I have it right where I want it. And I'm going to take another second look and just to make sure that I got that lined up right. Yep, that looks good. Everything looks even. And I'm going to trim it right off. And I'm doing this so that I can see where my where this needs to butt up against. If I don't do that, then when it comes time to sew it down, I could put it on crooked. And I don't want to do that. All right, so again, I still see where I have a, a crease right here, so I know to put my point right there, and I know to put my edges right there. Everybody following? Now, about the, just a step back to the wood iron thing, this one came from Missouri Star. It was in my, my Christmas box. It was part of my Christmas, um, 25 days of Christmas from Missouri Star. This one, I believe, is a June Taylor, and you can, of course, get that at Joann's or wherever June Taylor items are sold. Um, and then this one was the one that was made for me um, by Craig. And um, I still have a, a quite a few of them left. Well, I say quite a few, not that many, but I have a few left, and I will be happy to put them on my Etsy shop if you're interested. But I love my wood iron. Um, it does really make um, ironing those creases a whole lot easier. Okay, let's get back over here. We're going to stitch that bad boy down. Does that angle look better for everybody? like I'm not getting all my messages here. Hang on. Yeah, I guess that's the last message. Okay. Mine is cockeyed. Oh, Miss Laura, I'm so sorry. I just saw where you said that. That's all right. Keep try it again. And and just, you know, don't be afraid to take your time and and straighten it out. If you cut it wrong, well, that can be a little more difficult. So I would say if you did cut it wrong, if there's, um, you can make the, the, um, the black triangle a little bit larger so that you can kind of go past where it is and then just cut off the extra. Does that make sense? Thank you. 
Okay. So sorry. Y'all get on me about that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so again, if um, these should be even, so once you get to this point, all you need to do is just line it up. And I will say that most of these should all be by the halves. So if that helps, when you're done, you should be at a number plus a half. So this was five and a half. The one before that was four and a half. So we're at five and a half, and then we just have to trim off the little bit of extra. Okay? All right. So sorry about that, guys. I was doing so good, and I was trying not to say anything. Because every time I say something, I, I screw it up. Okay. Again, turn it down so that your purple is down at the bottom. And if you can guess, we're going to be doing letter B. We are back to letter B. Letter B and grab the next one. That's nice I got the windows open in the house because it just feels so good. And for anybody who is experiencing snow, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's why I live in Florida because I don't like snow. I don't like it at all. My first experience with snow was like bone, bone freezing. I was so cold. I didn't know. I had no idea you could get that cold. I didn't know cold came that cold. So yeah, born and raised my whole life in Florida. First time I experienced it, I think I was, I think I was 15. And I could not believe how cold I was. There wasn't enough heat that day to make my bones warm up. Okay, we've got that pinned down. Let's go back over to the other camera. And give it a zippity-doo-dah down that lane. Fold that over. Eventually, we're going to outgrow this particular mat. We'll have to go to the other one. Okay. Okay. All right. This side down. We're going to do the next side, and the next side is going to be the eye which is your light red color I. Okay. Oh, that don't look right. Oh, I know what it was. That was the one where I screwed that up. Okay, get that out of there. There we go. Color I. Okay, that should line up. We're going to flip it over, pin it down. Perfect, get that off of there. How's everybody doing? Trim that there. So how about everybody else? Did anybody else experience that kind of uh, thing with snow or were you born born in the snow? Those snowy, snowy areas. I did take a trip to Michigan once, man. That was some cold stuff too. It was beautiful. I mean, it was absolutely gorgeous. But it was, it was cold. It was freezing cold. Okay, I'm going to bring that over here. Nice 
crisp. Love it. All right, let's bring in the, um, bring in my little mat. And you probably should be able to use this mat all the way through, even though this, this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But that's okay because we just need this little section right here. Okay, let me grab my other, it's underneath here. Okay, again, this is our crease, this is our corner. This is our quarter of an inch. And I'm using the same spot, so underneath my four at the quarter of an inch, I'm laying it right down here on the corner. Lived in Virginia and Chesapeake Bay, froze over as well as the white caps on the ocean. No way. Miss Ann says, 10 years in Ohio and two in Korea. Oh, wow. It's not like you had quite a life there. Oh my gosh. Y'all, I just, I just cannot even imagine living in a cold climate like that. I'm just gonna recheck my line here real quick. I wanna make sure. I'm going by this spot right here, not this one here, because I can see that it's over just a little bit, which I will take off when I do my trim it. And that's why anything I have hanging over, or it looks like it's gonna hang over, I have it on the bottom, on this little, in this little corner, because I you know I'm gonna snip it right off. It's a Missouri star ruler. Did she ask something about that? Oh, so, oh, yeah, that's, this is a Missouri star. I actually have a whole bunch of rulers throughout my house. Oh, did I freeze up, y'all? No, I didn't. Good. Whew. I finally see some movement on there. Um, I don't carry a lot of rulers because, believe it or not, they don't sell. And that means I have to keep an inventory of them, and I just don't have that kind of capital um, to be able to do that. But yeah, this one I got from Missouri Star, I'll be honest, is not my favorite. One of the reasons I use it is because you can see better with this one than you can with this one. I am a big Quilter Select lover, but when it comes to showing you things on the camera, you can't really see through it very well. Um, I can, because I can, I can see very well. It's not on camera, but when you guys, you guys can't see it. And this you can see through uh, my other one I have around here somewhere, you can see through that, but they're not my favorites because they don't have that, um, the stuff on the back that keeps them from sliding around. So when I do lots of cuts, I find they tend to slide more, whereas the Quilter Selects don't slide like that. So, but I do like this one. It's come in real handy. It's uh, almost the perfect size for some of the projects I do. Um, but I was actually looking for a 12 and a half by like three or something. And I'm going to tell you what, that was not an easy one to find. Excuse me, not easy at all. All right, so I'm going to use the idea that we're going to come straight this way and I'm going to kind of move it around a little bit. Now you will see these on my Etsy site. These are also made by Craig. These are um, lathe turned or wood turned um, stilettos slash seam rippers. I absolutely love them. Um, he made this one for me. I put this little clip on the end and it keeps it from rolling around. And um, when I'm not using it, I can put it away. But I love it. The little pointy thing, the little stiletto on the end, really helps me to do a really good job of placement and guiding. So if you're interested, you'll find those on my Etsy. I think I only have like two or three left of these and like one left of the wooden ones. All right, let's get some pins in there so it doesn't slide while we're moving it over to the sewing machine. And get that down. How's everybody doing with this? Everybody finding it okay? Yes, Miss Claudine, that's your son. We are so proud of your son. He's such a sweetheart. He is definitely a friend of the quilters. Like I said, I really think he needs to belong to the guild because his work is beautiful. I've, I've quilted several of his quilts and yours, and they're all just gorgeous and very well done. How is he doing, by the way? I haven't heard from y'all in a while. Which reminds me, 
Hey, y'all. As it turns out, I do plan on trying to do a um, an embroidery class this month for those local. Um, I plan on doing an embroidery class, and I would really like to, if Miss Claudine is available, the third uh, Mon uh, third Saturday of this month, which will be two Saturdays from now. Okay, I'm wiggling around. I don't usually wiggle. Um, we're going to be doing one of uh, Sweet Peas designs, and I've decided I'm going to change up the class a little bit. So the class will cost you $20, but for that $20, you have to provide your own kit. All right. Now remember what I said, half inch mark. So whatever it is, you're going to be at the half inch. Okay. Trim that off. And at this point, you should hopefully only be trimming off the black. All right, how are we doing? How's it looking? I think it's looking great. All righty, let's get our next color out here. Where is local? I live in Alabama. That is definitely not local. We're over here in Bradenton, Florida, and Miss Claudine's wonderful sewing studio is over in Sarasota, Florida. Now, if you'd like to come down and spend the weekend with us, we would love to have you. Maybe you'd like to kind of get out of some of that colder weather. I don't know how cold Alabama is, but if you feel like getting out of some of that cold weather, come on down to Florida. We're having beautiful weather here. I don't know if I'd go swimming in the ocean right now, but the weather sure is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so we're going to put the, um, the C at the bottom in order. We're going to flip it over and pin it down. And as you see, it should match up perfectly. If for some reason it doesn't match up, check your cutting instructions. If you cut it right, then it's something that you're where somewhere where you're putting it either you're putting it out of order or um, well that's about the only thing I can think of you're putting it in and out of order it's not in the right place so recheck and make sure that it's going in in the direction you need it to it's cold right now but you never know <laughs> that's kind of like in Florida I mean it was raining and storming earlier today and yet now now it's bright and shiny and the weather I got the doors open, trying to air the house out, because um, I'll take any chance I can to get the doors open. Um, doo -doo -doo. There we go. I'll take whatever opportunities to air out the house, because in the summer, these uh, doors stay closed up pretty much the whole time. There we go, getting it stitched down. And don't be afraid to stop, you know, stop stitching. Don't, you don't have to keep going um, all in one long line because sometimes that's where we run into um, issues and we try to accomplish it all without stopping. And you know, stop. It's okay to stop stitching for a second and then go on because sometimes when we do that, that's when we make the mistake. We get our eyes off of the fabric and suddenly the fabric shifts. And so you just wanna, Watch out for that, and, and you know, it's okay to stop. It's okay to pause your stitching. I think that was one of the biggest problems I had, was pausing my stitching. There it goes. Okay. So, take your time. This isn't a race. It's a destination. All right, so our next color is gonna be color H. Color H. I'm going to put that right there. And of course, I know you see the pattern here. Do we have you on the calendar? Not yet, Miss Claudine. I just decided last night, not decided, but I just um, was looking at um, some different patterns that um, would go well for the next class. Um, but I was going to give you a call. But since you're out here already, if your calendar is free, 
I would love to do the next class on the third Saturday. If you're available. If you're not, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll find a different time. But it's been so long. I look, I'm so looking forward to visiting and spending some time with y'all. What pattern? Okay, I will show you what pattern. I haven't done it yet, but this, this is the pattern for the next one. And this is the Sweet Pea windowed organizer hanger. And when I saw them demonstrated, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do one. I have to do one. It's so stinking cute. Not like I don't have a ton, a ton of things to put my stuff in. But, you know, this is this could be used for so many different things. And you put in the, um, you put in the little wording. And um, so you, you could use this not necessarily just for sewing, but say if you want an overnight bag or something like that. You can put in anything you want in here. You can put, uh, uh, maybe you want to put it for the back seat of your car to hang on the back seat. And you can put your, your, you know, your child's, um, you know, toys, snacks, um, hand sanitizer, juices, you know, you can put whatever you want to on it. So I'm actually kind of excited about this one. Um, I know I think Miss Miss Sheila was hoping we were going to do the cube one, which I did actually print that pattern out, um, but I don't want to do the cube for the class. I want to do the windowed hanger because I really think it'll be fun and it's got some new techniques. We'll be working with um, uh, what do they call that stuff? The clear stuff, the, um, the vinyl, the clear vinyl. And uh, I'm all about learning new things. And so I really want to work with the clear vinyl versus a zipper and mesh. And it has all of that. All the way to the end. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a little crooky there. All righty. Yeah, unfortunately, Sweet Pea um, doesn't allow me to do video classes with their, um, oh, you're so sweet, Miss Miss Claudine. You leave me on the calendar. You're so sweet. I'm just glad that the last time we talked about doing it and it didn't work out for me, it didn't work out for you guys either. So I feel like that's a God thing. Okay. Let's come on over here. Get the camera back on. Camera, camera. All right, let's iron this bad boy down. We did the, the wood iron. Um, yeah, <laughs> Miss Sheila's so funny. I'm pouting. She, she says, I'm pouting. I know, we talked about the cube. And the cube is really cute when I watch them stitch it out. It's a very simple stitch out. Um, but I just really think the, um, that the window would give us some more techniques that we'll be trying and accomplishing and learning. And so I really just want to... I want to kind of keep that theme going with my classes is make sure that you learn something new at every class or keep practicing. Okay, so here we have our line. By the time we're done with this, you guys ought to have a really, really good understanding on how this works. Okay. So there's our corner. We're stitching all the way down to the corner. Use a mustard letter to line it up. We're using our quarter of an inch right there. Yep, there's a quarter of an inch underneath my four because that's what I like to use. I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm going to kind of just keep my eye and make sure it stays there. But then I'm going to check here and here and make sure that's even. If it's even and it's on this line, then I know I can trim it. And you ought to have, if you put this up here, you ought to see where you have a perfect perfect triangle. Okay. Didn't look so perfect. Anyways. Maybe that's why they're all the sides are coming out. You know, sometimes these aren't exactly straight and it could be that could be why they're at the dollar tree because these 45 degree lines aren't really 45 degree lines. Who knows? Um, let me iron that real quick. But it's so minuscule right now, it's not that big a deal. But that would explain why my corners have been coming out a little wild. Okay. 
yeah, that's why I usually, you know, if it's real important, I'm not too sure I would spend a whole lot of money at the dollar store for really important stuff unless you know for sure that there's no defects in it because it's got to be there for a reason. But I do shop a lot at the dollar store, I ain't going to lie. Okay. Okay. Let's come on back over here to this camera. Wow. Okay. Miss Claudine says she can't see me, but that might have been a while ago. That was way back when we had the first. Wow, okay. Am, is, am I still there? Is everybody still there? Miss Ann, did you want me to put you down for the for the class? Now if you want the um if you want the kit to go with it, that includes all your zippers and everything, uh, it's gonna be forty dollars. Okay, because it's going to be the um, the vinyl you're going to need for the see-through, uh, mesh if you want it, the fabrics for the backing, your binding, your zippers, all that will be included in your kit. Hey, Miss Janice, glad you made it back, or glad you're still there. Sorry, here I'm playing with that seam. I will send out an email to um, all past um, embroidery students um, to find out who wants to. Oh, that ain't what I'm trying to do. Robin, stay focused. I will send out an email to all the past embroidery students to see who wants to come, and then it'll be open to general the general pop populace. And Miss Lori, if you'd like to come and you got a friend down here in Bradenton, Florida, or Sarasota, Florida, you want to stay with, um, come on down. The weather's been great. I think I'm about to change my change to a scant quarter of an inch. All right, how are we looking? Everybody looking to do? Oh, yep, and you got, and a machine too. All right, you got it. You got the machine. I have, um, well, currently one extra, unless Miss Sheila decides she doesn't want to come. Um, I have one extra machine. I have a machine, and Miss um, Miss Beryl got, Miss, Miss Ann got the, the one machine I have available. I'm slowly trying to add machines to that so that everybody, you know, who can't bring their own machine, um, doesn't have to, but unfortunately I'm not there yet. Okay, so with the way we've been going at this, the very next one is going to be B. We need a B strip. Meatloaf Fresh Greens. Well, now I'm lost in the conversation somewhere. Mashed potatoes, that sounds good. Oh, Craig is bringing dinner. Where's mine? I want my dinner. I'm coming even though I'm pouting. I want a kit. Okay, you got it. Um, and if you want to, you can just bring the money at that day. But just remember, if you reserve a spot, you are still responsible for that spot. So you'll either have to sell it to someone else or you still have to pay for the spot. Okay, guys, you remember that? Um, that was another change I made just because it was um, easier on everybody rather than trying to go through the event place that I was going through because it was getting a little confusing and difficult to, to navigate. I'm going to put this piece right here because that's next. 
well, not next, next, but. Okay, let's get over here to the, so I got Miss Sheila and Miss Ann. Perfect. Hang on, got to find my button there. Um, and whoever's coming, make sure you go through the link in the bottom of this page or at the top of the page to purchase your, um, your pattern. And it is the windowed, it's, in fact, it's like the very first pattern um, on their website at the top of the page. It's in one of the featured. And if you join their Facebook group, you can get 30% off that pattern too. That's one of the reasons I picked it because you could get it at a discount. Moving the camera over. I figured maybe if I say that, I'll remember to keep turning it on. Yeah, hopefully this week I'll have an opportunity to um, get mine done so I can get the pictures up. But in the meantime, I'll just use the Sweet Pea ones. Just remember, you got to go to Sweet Pea to buy the, buy the pattern and then just bring your kit fee when you come because I can't, I can't include the kit fee. They used to let me include that in my kit fee, but they don't let me do that anymore. Okay, so B side down, H and I side this way. And we're going to be doing the I next. You guys, we are getting close to the end. I say that, but we're probably got about three more, probably about three more to go. Three more, three more turns. Let me put it that way. And as you can see, that fits on there pretty much perfectly. Well, almost perfectly. I'm going to line that up up here. And you do want to be careful because we keep stitching down this way. Um, what's going to happen is your, your, um, your block is going to start turning at a curve. Um, so sometimes it's a good idea to go up the other direction um, to keep it from making that curve. And you may notice that especially if you do a lot of jelly rolls, if you keep doing the seam down the same direction, starting at the top and going down, starting in top and going down, you'll find that your pattern will start to curve in. What you need to do, though, the best way to do it is the first one go down, but on the next one go up. The next one come down, the next one go up. And we probably should, even though this is just a small block, we should, probably should be doing that on this one as well. Um, the other option is to just kind of go up a little bit in this corner, I don't know if you can see, but just start up a little bit higher in this corner, push that fabric up just a little bit higher, and then, um, and stitch. Or you can just turn around and stitch it from the other end. Either way, it works well. But that, if you're getting curves in some of your long stitches like that, that's usually why. All right, let's come over here to the throat plate. Let's go from this end. I'm going to go over, I'm going to kind of default to a scant quarter of an inch. Hmm. Well, that thing is pretty bent up. I guess I better get rid of that one. Okay. And then I see where it's trying to slide out on me. That happens too. Okay. It's getting bigger. Before you know it, we're going to be at a full 12 and a half inches. Okay. And I think I need to go on to the next size mat because I think we've just outgrown that one. So let me pull in my other mat. If you're wondering, I even have a small one. There's a teeny tiny one around here, the four inch, my four inch mat. I don't know where I put it though. Hang on. Oh, here it is. Y'all, I even use the little four inch mat. I love my little four inch mat. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. I'm switching camera, camera. Okay. So we switched from, so I was using this one. I do have this one, and now we're back to this one. Well, back to, back to it, this project. 
and you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of mats. Well, you know what? They come in kind of handy when you have just a little thing you need to iron and you don't need that much space. Um, that little itty bitty four by four works perfect for that. And sometimes I put my Oliso on there. Okay. So we're gonna slide that out of the way. I wonder if I have, hang on, let me see if I got another mat down here. Y'all, I have mats all over the place. I mean, all over the place. Yep. Here's one. Let's try this one. Okay. Now this is my little Susan Daly. Is that right? I'm not. I'm, I may have the name wrong. Um, but the pink, the pink top, I just completely shredded it. I used it so much, I just shredded it. So eventually, I just ripped it off and cut up a regular green mat to put on it. Uh, but I still did go out and buy another one because I really like the pink mats. Okay, how are we doing? I'm coming in again. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not frozen or anything, am I? Everything okay? All right, so here's my little corner right there. I'm going to make sure I'm lined up on here good. See, now with this one, I can see my lines here and here. And that looks good. Got to hold it real steady because this one wants to slide. And I'm on a turning mat, so... Okay, let's see how we did on this one. Oh, that looks much better. That looks much better. Okay. And let's take our little triangle and we're going to line it up. We're going to look right here. Try and make sure we're even on the edges, on the ends, and those ends do not look even. That looks much better. Yep. Okay. Everybody following this along? So we just found out that even though that little mat is so cute and so easy to use, it, the, um, the 45 degree mark is actually off just slightly just enough sorry I had to bend over and pick that up all right let's get over here get that stitched down this is looking so good you guys looking wonderful All right, let's see how bad or good we did. Camera, camera, camera. There we go. Okay. Let's get this flipped over. What we're aiming for is we're aiming so that we have very little cutting to do. You don't want to have to trim a whole lot, if, you know. It, we're always looking to make it perfect. We want perfect points. We want perfect edges, perfect seams. So that's always what we're striving for. Now, we're, that is one of those things that you're just, I don't know, we should always strive for it, even though we know that it's so difficult to reach perfect. And that's okay. But you should never quit trying. It's hard to move this now that it's so large. Oh, that looks so much better. Oh my gosh, look at that, guys. Look, look. That looks so much better. Now that we got that corner better. Okay. Zip, zip. Look at that. So good. We're right at eight and a half now. Okay. And we don't have a whole lot left, thank goodness. There we go. All right, so we got the BC side down. Get some of that dust out of the way, fabric dust. All right, I'm gonna have to change my my cutting thing because it's a, it is now too small. All right, now we're going to go back and we're going to be doing um, C. 
and this should be the last C of this, the narrower cut. The next one will be the larger, the wider cut. Okay, everybody follow me on that? All right, down here. And we're going to flip it over, meatloaf. Man, I keep seeing that comment up there, meatloaf. You're making me hungry. I'm getting hungry. Anybody else hungry? My goal is to have a new camera um, for this one because this is actually a webcam, which makes it kind of, um, makes everything look, um, what's a good word, very fisheye. If you've ever used a fisheye lens, which I have because my previous life I was a photographer, um, but if you've ever used a fisheye lens, it distorts the outer edges so that you can get more of the image into a photograph. And so that's what I feel like this one is doing. It's definitely got that fisheye look to it. All right, let's get over here and get that zip zipped. Zip zip right through it, okay. And this would be a good time to go ahead and flip it over and work from the other side. Again, it'll help to um, decrease that, that curving that happens on long strips. And I'm going to just make sure it stays lined up. my little wood iron and you can use your fingernail but um, for whatever reason it really bothers me when I run my fingernail over the fabric I think it's a it's a tactile thing you know some people don't like loud noises some people don't like the feel of their socks the inside feel of the sock this is my thing I don't like the I don't like running my fingernails over fabric now don't get me wrong I love petting fabric. I love to pet fabric, but I do not like to run my fingernails over fabric. Okay, the next color is going to be H. We're going to be doing the H fabric next. Turn it back to the right direction. H fabric is next. And that should leave you with one piece of fabric for each color on your board. If you have a project board that you're working with, like I have, um, you should have one of each color left. And you should have one of these and two of the larger ones. That's what should be left. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Miss Jan's like, I'll take dinner too. I know, right? Share. Craig, where's your humanity? We're hungry. We're hungry people. Just, you know, trot some right on over here. Just kidding. Don't you dare come over. You spend that time with your mama. She's a sweetheart. We love Miss Claudine. <laughs> Miss Claudine says, come on over. And that would be just like y'all to welcome everybody in your door. I know you. Oops, sorry. Here on. Let's change cameras. There we go. looking so good as, are the corners getting any easier is everybody you know finding that the corners as you do them as you as you're putting the practice in to get to these corners right I mean is it seem like it's getting easier that's what I'm hoping for y'all he spoiled me yes he does he's a sweetheart he takes good care of his mama all right
right, Miss Laura. Well, Miss Miss uh, Janice, you keep staying on bed rest. You you do what the doctors say, and uh, make sure you take care of yourself because we want you around for a long, long time. Oops, hang on. Camera, camera, camera. Sorry, here I went and ironed that whole thing down without y'all. Okay. So we're going to put this right back in that corner again because we want to make sure we're getting it right. Because what we're doing is by using the, the 45 degree line, we're trying to make sure that it's straight so that when we make that cut, the cut is straight. Okay. And I'm going to keep saying it only because it's the best way to do it. This is the corner that we're going to be using. Here's the four, the quarter inch mark. We're going to line that up with that little corner right there. We're going to look at this line and this line and try and make it match. Even though I think this one moved a little bit. So let me turn it a little. There we go. That's better. Okay. I got my quarter inch mark right here on this, in this corner. I'm looking, checking here, checking here. Looks good. Hold it down pretty steady and trim. All right, let's get rid of that. See, the one thing I know for sure is that repetition is the one thing that's going to help. If you're just doing one thing one time, it's not going to help because you're not going to remember it. But if you do it over and over again, you're going to get a lot better at it. It's going to make more sense as you go along. So we're just kind of looking down here and here to see that it's lined up. We're looking here and right straight down to see how that corner lines up. If it works better for you to um, fold it over and create another crease, make another crease. Do what you've got to to make sure that you're putting it where you want it to be. I'm just trying to make sure it's on there straight. You know, here, let's do this. Let's flip it over. Ugh. It's like nails for a chalkboard for me. Ugh. That's why I love my iron. So when I open it up and look, I can see that my point is right down that crease, and that's exactly where it should be. So apparently I can eyeball pretty good sometimes. All right. Let's move it on over here to the other camera. I'm going to keep saying camera so that I remember to hit the button. Unfortunately, I don't have a camera person. kind of wish I did. I tried to talk my daughter into doing it with me, you know, Nicole, but uh, she's like, eh, no, I don't think so, Mom. Not my thing. I'm like, but it's just pushing a few buttons. She's like, nope, I'm good. She'll do a lot for me, but that's just one thing she does not want to do. I, was, I can't, can't say as I blame her. I mean, it is her, her Sunday with her daughter, and I hate taking up that time, so I don't harass her over it too much. All right, got that done. We're going to put this right here, change the camera. Okay. Ironing is done. We're just going to line it up. As it should be correct and all we need to do is trim off just a little bit on each side looks like I need to come up just a little bit okay beautiful here's my Martelli listen I am the most eclectic quilter I have a little bit from this one a little bit from that one and my thing is I keep trying things until I find what works for me I love my Martelli I love my quilter selects um, these are some of my favorite scissors, and I didn't find those until much, much later. Um, and it has to do with because of the serrated edge. I have a couple of the medium size and one large one left, but I sold out of my smalls. And, um, but anything I find that works for me, I will let you know. Because I just keep trying things until I find something that I feel like is worth the money. And I did find out that oftentimes that's exactly what you're going to have to do. Anything worth its salt is probably going to cost you a little bit of money. Okay, so now we're going to do, we're going to be coming back to color B. 
Now for anybody that's new here and keeps wondering why I, why I just don't say purple, is because a lot of people are using from their stash for this, like they didn't buy the kit from me, which is fine, because I don't mind. I mean, that was part of the thing. You know, it doesn't cost anything. You can pull from your stash. You can, um, you can use what you have, or you can get your kit from me. Um, I do actually have a couple kits left, but that's okay, because we're almost done. We're down to like the last couple. And uh, this one is off just a little bit. Pull it down just a little. There we go. All right. And um, so uh, some people have colors that don't line up with what colors I'm using. And if you've been on my Facebook page, um, the SRQ Facebook page, you can see where um, they've got some really, really adorable colors that they're doing these blocks in. And they're just so stinking cute. And I love that. I love seeing how everybody has something just a little bit different. And I so look forward to posting them on the page because it gives me an opportunity to see what everybody's doing. Okay, put the last pin in, and then we're gonna come over here and stitch it down. Checking to make sure it's staying underneath there. I like to say I never run over my pins, but I do. I'm, in fact, I'm actually quite notorious for it. And I wobble just a little bit there. I think that'll be okay. All right, change the cameras. As a, it, now this is one of the bigger ones. This is one of the bigger strips. And as they get bigger, you know, you just want to, you can't necessarily keep them underneath the machine while you're doing the little wood iron on it. Okay, that looks good. Then our next color is going to be I. We're going to do the big I. And that should line up right there. Look at that. Looks beautiful, right? And it's the wider one. And that's good. That should be. I need three pins. All right, let's bring it back over to the other camera and stitch along. Not knocking my camera out of, ooh, yep, sorry, ran right over that. See, I'm actually quite horrible at it. And that's not a good thing, by the way, because um, it can throw your machine out of alignment. Um, it can break off a piece of the needle and jump up and smack you in the eye, the forehead, something crazy like that. You don't want that to happen either. And I have actually had that happen, but I had my glasses on at the time. So you just want to be careful um, running over those needles, which means don't run over a needle. That's bad. It's very bad. Some days I'm going to have to be like, uh, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Because that's, that's bad. That's a bad habit to have. And unfortunately, it was one of those bad habits I picked up. But I oftentimes use a really, really long stitch length, like three or better. Because I know I'm terrible about that. Okay. So we are up to... <clears throat> we are up to the big... We are up to the big time now. All right. So... Yeah, we can still use that, okay. It would probably be better to have an uh, one that it can lay flat on, but I think as long as we can make sure that it's lined up, we're good for now. 
Okay. There's our where our joint our seams meet. Oopsie, it's sliding right out from underneath me. Okay, so there's where our lines stay and meet up. We're gonna find that little quarter of an inch right there. Right over the top of our line. Any questions? Yeah, okay, we're good. And then we're gonna see if these parts line up. And that is not doing so good. I think we might have to move to a different mat because that's not lining up well. Well, that's better. Line up right on the line. That's great. Whew. Glad I moved it. Then we're going to trim. And I'm going to check this thing real quick. See how I did. Just past. Oh, nice. So what I'm looking at is I've got the, I've got this right here in the in the center, and I'm looking back here, and it's just a little bit over past that seven right there, and a little bit past that three, and that tells me that it's even on both sides. That's what we're looking for. That's what you want. Okay, now let's grab one of those big triangles. We're gonna put that right there. And you can see right there where it's going to come down at. Perfect. And then I want to make sure it's there and there. And it still feels like it's over a little bit, but the, the um, point is perfect. So let's go with it. Let's go with it. Go with what you see. And what I see is the point is perfect. And that's what I care about. All right, guys, we are almost done. We have like one more turn to go and then we are finished. All right, how did we do on time? Oh, hour and a half. Oh, ran right over that needle, thank goodness. It did not catch. Neither did that one. Okay, come back over here. Y'all, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I so appreciate it. Look at our point. Isn't that point pretty? It looks like I just probably could have moved it over a little bit, but according to where my point was at, it was supposed to be perfect. All right, let's trim that up just a little bit. we can make up any shortfall on the next round, the last round. All right. And here we go. Now you want letter C. And that should be the last one for letter C. And it should be a big one, a fat one. of the th pieces. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I come all the way down here to the bottom. So I'm going to line up with this one because this is our last one. So we got to got to make it look good. Cover up all of our any imperfections that we feel like we have. And trust me, I always feel like I have imperfections. Pin there. Pin there. And like I said, if you don't pin, that's fine. Plenty of people don't, and in the mo for the most part, I don't pin, but um, for times like this, I do. Okay, let's come over here to the other camera. And 
and we're going to stitch this last one on this side. It's better to stop and pull the pin than it is to just keep going and pull the pin out. Only because I find that I tend to pull the fabric when I'm pulling the pin out. Even though the pin should slide right out, sometimes it doesn't. Just making sure I'm still where I need to be. Okay. Let's bring this back over here. Bring in the next camera. There we go. Whew. For a minute there, I wasn't too sure it was going to come back on. It's taking a second. Okay. Okay. Y'all, this looks so pretty. And I love these colors. All right, we're bringing in the last color, which would be color H. Yes, color H. And again, it should be the, the whiter. Should be the whiter of the fabrics of the two colors, two cuts, okay? We're gonna flip that over and grab a couple pins. We wanna get that as close. Again, this is the last one, so we wanna make sure that if there are any imperfections um, that we catch it now. And what I mean by that is let's make sure that the top is as straight as possible. Mm, excuse me. And I see that some of my edges are probably need to be cleaned up a little bit. Got to make sure that matches up really well. And I'm not so much worried about down here at the end as I am up here at the top because this is going to get cut off. But your piece should fit just perfectly. And again, it all depends on your um, it all depends on your quarter of an inch seam allowance. Well, that thing popped right out of there. Am I on thread? Am. Doggone. Interesting. All right, hang on a sec. I just found out that I am out of my bobbin thread. I was wondering why that black was coming up so easy. But not to worry because I went ahead and, oh, I'm not out. Why did that not stitch that last little piece? I don't know. So let's just put it back in. That's the second time it's done that today. Of course, I do have the older, the, the thread I stopped using, which is a good thread. So I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get that straight. All right. Bring over our last strip. You guys are doing so great. I got I have 13 with me today. I am kind of doing a scant quarter of an inch because I want to make sure that I have plenty of leftover and I'd rather trim off a little bit than not have enough. So that's why if you're looking and you're wondering why I'm way over, that's, that's why. Okay, let's come on over here. Now as we're finishing up this last section, I just, I want to say a big thank you to everyone. Um, I don't know what happened with that last video, but it went, um, I don't want to say it went viral, but it just, it broke the ceiling. I mean, I had so many views on that. I haven't seen that kind of views ever. And I just want to say thank you for everybody that's sticking with me through this, um, who's been with me from the beginning, from the first scrappy quilt, uh, the first Polynesian 
quilt quilt along that I did class. I mean, there was there have been so many things that I have done, and you guys have just stuck with me through it all. And I just want to say thank you. And um, um, I can't wait to see what we accomplish. I can't wait to see what we do. All right, so let's bring in. Did we do what did I do did I bring this one in did I do this one I think I did let's get this last triangle on everybody having fun today I hope okay so we're going to line up my number four right here, right there. Oh, look at that. It almost lines up perfectly. So here's my quarter of an inch. And if I look here and here, they're just slightly off just a little bit, but just enough to let me know that it should be perfect. Yep, looks good. I'm looking it over. You know what they say, you know, measure twice, cut once, and this is definitely one of those times. Definitely one of those times when you want to do that. Okay, let's go over here, grab our last triangle, and this is the last piece. And then when we're done, we're going to measure it up and see how we did. And this time, I think I'm going to go by looking at my ends like I normally do, because this should be even with this. And they look pretty good. Let me... I hope you come join us again. We'll be back next week, Miss Lori. And if you would drop me a line, um, I might be able to get those clues to you so you can, you can work with us if you'd like. Um, and come join us next, next Sunday. We're down to like the last, I want to say the last, let's see, this is number nine. We have three more to go. And they only get more interesting from here. And feel free to go through my YouTube um, and look and see some of the other videos. Now, they're not short by any stretch of the imagination. So if you're in the mood, feel free to um, persevere through hours <laughs> of learning. Fortunately, I think the longest one is about two hours, but it was a pretty complicated block. Uh, most of them run about an hour to an hour and a half. And I'm glad that you had fun today and learned a lot. This is why I do it, so we can all learn together. And we're going to flip this out. Points are looking great. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Come on, come on up. There we go. Whew. That thing is taking longer and longer to come up. I might even have to switch out camera sooner than I think. All right, there's that. And then we're going to trim this up. It is starting to get chilly. I got the front door open to try and get some more air in here, and it is starting to get chilly. Perfect. Yes. Remember to remember to like. Remember to subscribe, and don't forget to hit those thumbs up and the hearts and all those things because apparently Facebook really likes that, and uh, they look for that when they talk when they look for content, so content to share with other people. So make sure you're. You're liking and doing thumbs ups and hearts and no sad faces. No sad faces. All right, so I'm going to look and see if we did, if we made it. Yay! We have 12 and a half inches. What? Perfect. Now, I do looks like I need to trim a little bit off up top there, because I, but I knew I would need to 
because I was doing a bit of a scant in, quarter of an inch. So everything looks great. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a fabulous time. Uh, we will be back next. Bleh, let me try it again. We will be back next Sunday at four. Um, you know, I started about 345 and uh, that's just so we get on and get a chance to chit chat a little bit before we get started. And then we start at eight, actually four o'clock on the dot um, to discuss what we're going to do and then get started. Um, and this was a blast and I am so glad you joined me here. Let's get back up on this screen right here. Um, and you can see behind me, we have the other blocks, the other sample blocks I did. Um, this one, God bless me. <laughs> um, this was when I wrote the pattern or when I did the very first, I somehow I got a hold of the very first correction and this one was not right. And that's when I realized that I had some of the blocks wrong uh, because the two, the two on the outside were wider and the, they were all the same size and I knew that wasn't right. So I went and did it again. And this time I put um, the two outside blocks a little bit bigger like they were supposed to be. And it turned out perfect for 12 and a half inches. Here I had to add a little bit extra to make it turn out to be the 12 and a half inches. This was the first test I did way back to three years ago when I wrote this pattern. And this was the one we just completed. So those are all the blocks from that I have been working on. So by the time I'm done, I usually have about three or four uh, quilts ready to be quilted from these because of the testing and everything that I do um, to go along and have these blocks prepared for you. Um, I just want to say thank you again for joining me. Ah, you guys have been fabulous and I thank you so much for your loyalty and your friendship and uh, and for this time we get to spend together on Sunday because otherwise I mean other than the guild meetings and things like that I, I don't get out of my house much but I do enjoy creating and I'm so glad that you um, love sharing it with me. Um, let me go ahead and do our quick prayer and let you get off. Thank you, Ms. Diane. And let you get back to your Sunday lives. Sunday lives as in life's, as in L-I-F-E. Um, Father, I just thank you for once again another opportunity to share and to meet new people like Miss Lori and to share with them the, the passion that we have and give them an opportunity to express their passion. Father, I just, I just, I am so grateful for this opportunity, this platform that you have given to us that we can share and be in other people's lives and let it always be for the good father. You know, we know that there are bad things out there. There are bad shares and things that people put out there that should never be out there, but we just know that you are in control father and we give you the control and we just ask you and in Jesus name to be with us and carry us through this week and bring us all back together next Sunday and uh, give us good feelings and good reports for the next time we get together. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and enjoy it and share it with your families, with your friends, and come back next Sunday and be prepared to share it with us so we know what kind of, what kind of wonderful time you had and so we can all get the, the feel goods that we like to have. Um, I am enjoying this. We have three blocks left and then we will start the next one. Um, and again, if you wanna get signed up for that, you just need to text me, email me, um, uh, whichever way you can get it to me um, so that I know that you want to be on the next one. Thank you, Miss Sally, um, uh, which is coming up soon. That's probably going to be about seven or eight, a seven or eight week quilt that will also go every Sunday at four o'clock. You'll get a new clue that Monday. Monday, don't forget, 10 o'clock, you should get your next clue. If you don't get it by Monday, contact me, okay, so I make sure you get your clue. So every Monday, um, get your clue, get it cut out, get it ready. Hopefully there are no more glitches because Miss, Miss Sheila and I have been over and over and over the patterns, especially this week saying, listen, you know, we got to make sure we have this straight. So she's been so patient and so helpful with me um, to help me get those straightened out because somehow we wound up with the wrong copy of what has been page after page of, of redos and it's... Um, but I love it. I love doing it. And I'm so grateful that you guys will basically help me pattern test these and um, help me make sure that all these tests are great. And so all the ones that are up on Etsy should be, should be perfect. Um, but, you know, if you find a problem in there, just let me know. And uh, make sure you follow along on the videos that we have done each Sunday. They are loaded up on YouTube or at least on Facebook for, the, for 30 days. And then they, I think they take them down. Um, 
And again, you can contact me if you have any questions. Listen, you guys have been great. Go have a wonderful evening, and I will see you next Sunday. Mwah.